Hi, I'm John Paul and a really warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. And what I wanted to talk about today was an article that I contributed to recently in Metro newspaper. And that article was about people with a bisexual identity in straight relationships. And it was talking about why in that situation it might be important to keep connected to your bisexuality, to your bisexual identity and how somebody might do that. So just some numbers here. It's estimated that about 9 in 10 people with a bisexual identity actually live in straight relationships. So it is a lot of people who are potentially uh, covered by this article and what I'm talking about today. And that study that found that also went on to say that only about one in five of them have told the most important people to them about their bisexual identity. So again, a lot of people are either potentially not connecting internally with that and certainly not connecting uh, with it in relationship with other people. So just looking first at why it might be important to connect with this part of self in this situation. The first key thing here is that if we deny or hide or split off a part of self, an intrinsic part of self like sexual identity is, either in relationship with self and or in relationship with other people, that part can really take on far more psychological significance than it would do if we didn't do that, if we sort of accepted it and didn't have conflict. You know, conflict, struggles, internal conflicts, internal struggles are a part of being human. We have a part that's about fear and a part that's about love. There can be a conflict between those two. You can see conflicts between short-term reward and our medium to long-term well-being as well. So as I say, short-term conflicts, resolving them, negotiating things internally and internal dialogue are part of living, a part of being human. Just like struggles, conflicts are part of relationships with other people as well, part of natural human relationship. But if we're talking about here denying, hiding, splitting off a part of self because somebody's ashamed of it or they're frightened, whether that's in relationship with self or in relationship with other people, then somebody's setting up an ongoing prolonged struggle internally, which is a huge drain on our internal resources and will keep us fighting ourselves internally and keep people stuck in life potentially. You know, what we want is for all of our thoughts, feelings, body and behaviour to be in alignment. You know, aside from these sort of short term struggles that we'll all go through, this sort of short term negotiation, short term conflicts, largely we want our thoughts, feelings, body and behaviour, including our sexual identity, all to be working for us. We don't really want to be splitting off any part of self, uh, denying any part of self, rejecting it, or it will work against us. The other point here is that we don't want to get into a situation where we're splitting off our thoughts from our body. We're splitting off our thinking from our feelings and our body. Because if we do that, uh, we are going to be having to go through life just with the benefit of our thoughts and not with the messages that our feelings might be giving us. And of course, our sexual identity is about thoughts. It's largely about feelings and emotions. So uh, let's not split our thoughts from our feelings and emotions, or that can cause us real difficulties. You know, what can happen here for people? Well, there can be, uh, you know, anxiety, depression, uh, chronic anger. Also, um, as a way to deal with them, people can develop addictions and dependencies to behaviours and substances because we don't want to feel angry, we don't want to feel anxious, we don't want to feel depressed, so we'll look for other ways to bring us back into sort of homeostasis and balance. So lots of emotional symptoms that people might be experiencing uh, if we do split off, deny or hide an intrinsic part of self. Also loneliness is talked about a lot at the moment. And it's really important to say about loneliness that it's not just about not having enough people around you, but loneliness is also about not being able to talk about the things that are important to you. And somebody's sexual identity, of course not everything, but it is an intrinsic part of self and it can be important just in a small way to be able to express that in relationship with other people. And certainly uh, in terms of that internal dialogue to be able to talk to self about it, to be able to accept it within self and acknowledge it and relate to it internally. And it's not just about avoiding problems. It's not just about avoiding anxiety or depression here. Sexual identity, I believe, contains a huge amount of power and drive and energy and real creativity and potential for creativity. So if we acknowledge that part of self, at least in relationship 
with self and potentially with others too, we have access to all of that. We have access to that drive, that creativity, that power that can get lost and will get lost if we split off from it and deny it and hide it. So as to what connecting with this part means to you, I think the important thing to say here is that there are no shoulds and ought to's. Uh, when the person asked me to contribute to the article, they said, what is it that somebody should or ought to do? And as with most things in life, we want to be more inward out rather than outward in. We grow up uh, having a lot of external factors and beliefs imposed on us. And that leads us, a lot of us, to be very outward in. So we get our validation, our views, opinions externally. But what we want, a place of well-being, is a balance of internal and external, but primarily we really want to be going inward out, inward out with life. And in this context, that means there is no should or ought to about doing it. There is no de narrow definition about what living with a bisexual identity within a straight relationship should actually look like. You know, for some people, it will simply be, I say simply, but acknowledging that part to themselves. So they may never want to talk to other people about it. But acknowledging and accepting a part of self and a same-sex attraction potentially resolves that internal conflict. And at least we're not living with that experience. Some people also then want to bring it into relationship with others. And that can just be kind of offhand comments about a sort of same-sex attraction with friends. It could be being around people who identify similarly and have that shared experience. Connecting with your bisexual identity in a straight relationship could also include listening to podcasts by people in a similar situation, reading books, or watching TV shows, or watching films, uh, listening to the radio, music produced by people uh, with a similar identity within perhaps within the LGBTQ community. As I say, there is no narrow definition of what it should look like here. It has to be what you're comfortable with, what you're happy with. It's your narrative about your life, it's your choices. So what happens here or doesn't needs to be led by you. You know, there's a lot of power for some people in putting a bisexual flag on their social media and just acknowledging in conversation with other people that they have a same-sex attraction. That can be enormously powerful and that may be enough. For, for, for someone. If your partner doesn't know that you're bisexual, it's worth thinking about what it might mean to, to let them know that. In a truly loving relationship, somebody's going to accept you for all you are. We're not talking about a situation here where somebody's going to need to leave their opposite sex partner to go into a same-sex relationship. Just acknowledging to a partner that you have a same-sex attraction can really make you feel more known and accepted by your partner. If you talk to them about it, you don't have to have all, if any, answers. And a truly loving relationship should be a safe space within which to do this. And of course, it's going to be hard for a lot of people. You know, often we get the message that, that bisexuality, anything other than straight uh, sexuality, is something to be feared or to be ashamed of. And we are programmed to survive rather than to be happy. So the thing we will prioritise all the time is our survival over our happiness. And it is not a matter of physical survival for people to know what our sexual identity is. The thing what I would say here though is a truly lived life is one which is characterised with love more often than not. A truly lived life is a loved one and if we split off a part, a part of ourselves we are not fully accepting and loving ourselves and if we deny it in relationship with other people or hide it from other people we are not allowing all of us to be loved by others. So I hope that's been interesting. As ever, any comments on this, please do post below. Of course, do contact me if uh, via my website. There's details on my YouTube channel if you have any questions or want to talk any further about it. Uh, also, let me know if there's any other subjects that you want covered by these YouTube videos. Uh, please do like the video if it's been helpful. Please do subscribe to the channel if you feel like it as well. Thank you for listening and do take care.